Thank you for joining us today for session two of Christmas um, Quilt Along. I'm Donnell McAdams and we are going to show you today the quilting of the project that we started last week. So if you will go to SoBizMarion.com and or go to Sew Studies website, you will find there the copy of the instructions that will help you through what we're going to do today. So this is a six page handout. You're going to see that there are a lot of drawings here and it's going to make it very easy for you to follow along with what we're doing. Now you don't have to have this before you watch this video, but it is going to make it easier. Now one little hint I will give you is if you're viewing this on like your computer or your iPad, when you find the instructions, you could actually blow up or enlarge the pictures so that, for example, if you wanted to see exactly where this spot was, you would be able to, while you were on your computer, to enlarge that, which you can't do, obviously, if you're just looking at the instructions. So when you go to SoBizMarion.com, if you will just scroll down on that first page, you'll see over on the right side all of the information that has to do with this quilt along and the link for last week's instructions are there as well as for this week. So you can download that information. So this week what we're going to be using is Spinifex 14. This is the set of templates. Yes, you could use some others. My instructions are specific to this particular set of templates. And you will see that there are five sizes there. You can purchase these as a set or you can purchase them individually. We are going to be using the 11 and a half inch. That's what we'll be using in the center here. We are going to be using for our border the nine and a half inch. And then for our cornerstones, we're going to use the little one that is three and a half inches. So those are the three sizes that we will be using for today's um, quilting. Now, last week we had the opportunity to um, give away the arrow large cat or the uh, excuse me the large cutting table I started to say cabinet but the large cutting table that will allow you to use that as far as in a big um, area it was like 40 by 46 so I don't know the winner of that yet but we will be announcing that soon today we are going to be giving away the glider by so steady this is a free motion glider. It comes in a tube like this. And I will be showing you how we use that. I can tell you that I would not even attempt free motion quilting with templates without using a glider. It covers up everything down underneath your um, needle area, all of the stuff around your feed teeth. Of course, we lower the feed teeth, but it covers all of that area up and makes everything nice and smooth so that you can move your templates easily. So this glider is something that clings. It's 11 by 18. I love this so steady glider for the fact that it is um, a great size and covers up a large area, but also the fact that it is not thick. It's a very thin glider, and so it doesn't change the thickness of um, the space between your foot and your um, glider. So with that, I will say thank you to our sponsors. We have June Taylor. Westerly Designs, So Steady, Aero Cabinets, and So Biz. Those are our sponsors and who are giving away our prizes. So um, in order to win, you would be needing to comment as you watch and view. Um, give us some information about what you're doing, where you're, where you're taking your classes, where you're watching from, any of that kind of information. Also, commenting is considered... Um, Questions are considered comments. So if you put your questions there, we'll be back to answer those. Um, this is not a live, but um, we're going to treat it just like it was. So if you will go ahead and put your comments there, we will get those um, questions addressed. So going back to what we had last week, this is a different one than what I had um, because I've already stitched that one up. I'll show it to you here in a little bit because I'm going to use it in stitching also. But I want to go ahead and show you how we mark this center again. 
So I have an eight and a half, or excuse me, an eight point, but it is a 12 and a half inch square up here. It's a crosshair grid. And what I'm, I've done is I've measured from corner to corner to find dead center. And so I'm going to put that right there in the center. Now, if you recall, I talked about these new misters. And we have these that you can put your best press or any kind of starch alternative in. And it gives a better mist, a better coverage. And once you spray that on here, when I make marks with my colors here, I have the Frixon markers. I'm going to be using two colors. You'll see why. But when I use those, then I can later iron them off because that best press created a barrier between my fabric and my marker. So now that I've got that centered, I'm making sure that it's center from side to side. And I'm just going to put marks out at the outer edge. I don't need them in closer. So there's no need to put them in closer. And those are the ones that I'm going to use first. So blue is going to be first. And then I think you can see here we have some etchings on our crosshair grid. There's some right there. So I'm going to rotate my crosshair grid so that I line up those etchings with my previous markings. And it's very important to get this exactly lined up. So I'm lining up here and here and there and there and dead center. And then I'm going to put some markings in the pink. We will use those the second time around. So I'm just marking those and you can see I'm just going one time. I'm not rubbing back and forth or anything. I'm just going one time. So now I have 16 markings, blue are first, pink is second, and I'm going to be able to follow those when I do my center design. Now I have one small corner here left that I'm also going to mark. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use my Westerly template. I don't mean template, it's the ruler that I've been showing you. And I have put this at four inches. So I'm going to put that right at the four inches, and right there is the four. So what I'm doing is I'm marking off my four inch cornerstone. Now it doesn't matter what color you use here, but you will notice we have extra space around here. But I want to know exactly where that cornerstone is. I also want to mark so that my border, and again, I've already done it on a couple of the sides, but I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw right down this edge. Now I'm using what's called the ultimate marking pencil. It looks more like a crayon, but this is an iron off and I did that side. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do this side. So you can see this nice black edge there just rides right up against there and all I'm doing is marking down this side. And the reason I like this is you can see this is a bit wider than this is right here, but when we're finished with our quilt, we are going to have the perfect four inches. So it just really helps us to be able to keep everything nice and straight rather than going off of this bottom edge here that may be a little less here than it is there but we're going to be measuring right off of that so we can tell that that's an exact four inches there. So I'm now going to go and mark this corner. I could get my smaller crosshair square here and you'll notice that on it I have markings right across here. This would be for a four inch right there. So all I'm going to do is mark that four inch, put that in that corner. The four inches here and here. And so now I'm just going to dot in the center and out here
make some lines. And the beauty of this is meaning that I'm not going to have to have a ton of marks. I don't need to mark this up completely because if I've got my center, I know where to mark up or match up without outer edge. join me over here at the sewing machine and I've already put on but I'm going to take it off this is what I was talking about with the glider right here I have all of this and I can cover all of that up with my glider this is all smooth because our sew study tables fit right up around our sewing machine they're all custom cut if you don't have one yet I would certainly investigate check with your local quilt shop and get one order because I just love mine and you'll find that you love yours too. But this is what we call the glider and I am going to take and put this right underneath there. You notice I'm kind of holding it up so it doesn't cling down because when it goes to cling down it really clings. And right down underneath here I want to center it underneath my foot. After I've got it under there I'm just going to smooth this out if it's no longer clinging, it means you've got fibers and probably a little bit of quilt batting and maybe some thread, some fuzz on it. And all you need to do is rinse it in warm water. Do not use any soap or anything, just rinse it in warm water. I did take the time to pull my threads up there from my sewing machine because I don't want them caught underneath my glider. Now, I have just played around with this a little bit and checked it. Notice that I have some fleece underneath here, or I shouldn't say fleece, batting. It's the same as the batting that I've used on my quilt sandwich, and that way I checked out my tension. So I have good tension here because I really can't even tell which is the front and which is the back, and that's what we want to be able to do is have it so that it's good front and back. Now I've used a size 90 top stitch needle and so we're pretty much ready to go with our quilt sandwich. So I'm setting that underneath there. And right there in the crosshairs in the center is where I am going to plant my foot. And I'm going to show you how I secure my thread. So what I will need for that is a curved needle. If you're not familiar with a curved needle, they come um, usually like two in a package and it may come in a package that's called repair kit. Um, that curved needle has a lot of different uses but I could not get along without it when I'm securing my threads. I'm also going to need tweezers and either another machine needle or a straight pin or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I put that in, I rotate my hand wheel one time so that my take up lever comes back to the top and I lift up my foot and you can see that I have my bobbin thread there. So I have both threads now pulled out. This, is, this top thread from the needle is down and through so it's underneath that foot. This is important for the step that we're going to do next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop because the first thing to a knot is a loop. And then I can either use a straight pin or another needle or something and I'm going to put that through that loop. It's through the loop and then I'm sticking the point right back in where it came out from the, from the um, fabric. So you can see I, I can then pull down to make that knot right down on the surface. And when I do that, you'll notice that my, uh, in this case it's a sewing machine needle, you'll notice that it's stuck down through the fabric. 
And that's because that's down in where my feed teeth are and all of that, and it's a, there's a space in there so it can just pretty much stand right up. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my thread so that they're both even. And instead of wetting those threads, I'm gonna put the needle eye in my mouth so that I get saliva and it'll just go right through there like a magnet. So if you get saliva in the um, eye of the needle, it'll go through. And then I'm going to take the point of that and bury it right back down in where all of that is and I'm pushing from the side and you can see it come up there. Now because this thread is green, if I just went under the layer of my fabric and didn't bury it in the batting, I would be able to see that. So I want to bury it in the batting. I'm pulling this through and pulling that tail through. And before I cut this thread, I'm going to release that so you can see my knot right there. And I'm just simply going to, I'm putting my fingers here so you can see it better. It'll just pop right down in there. So it's down in the bottom. I'm gonna lower my foot and replace my needle down there. So now I'm just going to take my sharp snips here and cut that and that thread is buried in that fabric. So that's how easy it is to get that <clears throat> thread in control before we actually begin our design. Now you notice I don't have a template yet. So what I need to do is take the gate, which looks like a puzzle piece, open up that gate, and now I can simply slip this around and push the gate back together. Now on low shank templates, you can usually just flip them back. High shank, you usually have to take it completely out. I was lucky on this one, I was able to flip it back, but this is what I mean by can take it completely out. You would take that out, put it in, and then replace your gate. This is one reason that that gate is in there, is so that you can do that. Now you'll notice that this template is similar from top to bottom. You can use it both ways, but the way we're using it today is so that this part right here is nearest to the needle. So the point will be out, this will be nearest to the needle. You'll notice that there is a little hole in it, so you can use this as um, a type of spinning wheels template. In other words, you would put the thumb tack in there and rotate around that. We're not doing that today. We're gonna to put this right up against our foot. And so this line here, even though I don't have long lines out here, sometimes I just take a second to see by using another template, do I have it lined up with my needle? And then out here at the outer edge, I'm going to do the same thing so that I can see if that is lined up. Now if you wanted to extend your lines, there's no reason that you couldn't do that. So I'm going to extend a couple of these just to get started so that you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So I can extend this line out this way. And this first one, I'm actually going to turn this around so that you can see me stitch this. And I've already secured, as you saw me do there, so I am going to tell you another little hint here and that is that I set my machine to a medium speed I turn my foot pedal around to the back and then I simply floor it so I have the same speed beginning to end so we're ready to begin I would recommend that you slow down when you get to these intersection types where it changes directions a bit and you want to make sure that you get right back to the center. So that's the shape that we're doing. I'm going to rotate this because I can. You know, some people say, well, you shouldn't rotate while you're doing this. Well, if I can and it makes it easier, then that's what I'm going to do. Now I've lined this line up right here. 
I've got it dead center. I'm looking through to the back. This is very, very important because when I come around here this time, nothing's really matching up. But when I get ready to do it the third time, I'm matching up exactly right here. So I will need to have my spacing gauge ready. Now it doesn't matter whether I go around to the left or the right first on what we're doing right here. I do want to get right back to that center. Now you'll notice that I kind of hesitated right there and some of you guys probably think that I'm going to end up with a knot in that position. I won't. So when I get there, rather than trying to race around that corner, I want to get my mindset on exactly where it's going to go. So I don't race around that corner. Now I'm going to take this one before I even turn this and I'm going to extend this line out here because what I want to show you is now how we want to make sure that I've got this right dead center. Look in there to make sure you've got it centered. This is lined up, but now it is very important to use your spacing gauge. Now I would not have known this had I not already done it. If I just picked up this template, I would not have known that. But right here, I need to see that that is an exact quarter of an inch, not an almost, but an exact. So you can see that right there, that is that exact quarter of an inch. And it's lined up perfectly out here. Now if I have to pick one or the other, I'm going to forego this being lined up and make sure this is. And this is why it's so important to have enough stable tape. You'll notice that on this piece, I have eight pieces of stable tape because I want everything remaining nice and flat. Right there's where we're matching up. I'm going to rotate Again, I'm going to extend this line. If we see that we're extending all of them, we might as well go ahead and just do that. And you could do that before you even began. I'm going to rotate again. I'm lining up here. And yes, I've got to get that quarter of an inch exact right in that spot right there. So that when I come around, that will match up. Again, checking to see that I got right back to center, lining up out here nearest me, measuring, Lining up out here. It's always a good feeling when you put this together and it matches right there and you don't really have to do a little, a lot of scooting. Sometimes it's just a matter of flattening out the fabric. Notice how that speed stay in the same. It's not fast, but it's consistent. This one I will need to draw that line again. Now some of you are wondering again what pen because about now you're thinking, did she say what that was? This is the Frixon Color Markers. It's not a stick. It's not the pens. They're the markers. And again, check with your local quilt store. You may be giving them some information that they're not aware of, but I'm sure they would love to know how to use those correctly so that they come right off of their fabric. Now while I was talking, I measured that.
and notice right over here it came back and met and right there it met so that means obviously I've only got one to do and I'm gonna turn this and this time I'm gonna check this one first because this is the direction that I'm going to go I'm gonna check this one and I can tell you that it's pretty much right on but what I want to do is stop here at the top and if I need to adjust it a little bit to one direction to get it to match. So now that I've stitched to the point, this is the last one, I've done half of it. I stitch, I measured up here and now what I want to do is we're going to move that so you can see right back here is where I have to measure again. And if that were not where it was supposed to be, I could slightly, ever so slightly, move that so that I've got enough space. So I'm going to stitch this other side now, and I should come right back to the beginning. Passing that, and right back down to the center. So I'm right back at the center, and you can see that there's a little space in between each of those and these are what we wanted to match up. So that part of the design is complete. And if you're following along on your handout, we're still on that very first page. You notice when I pulled that out, I knew what was going to happen. I was going to be pulling out that thread. And I'm going to then pull this out from this direction and cut the bottom thread. Now I'm just going to take this back in This thread is not going to be a problem to me. And I'm going to show you how I do this next step on this particular piece, but then I'm going to show you on another piece so that you could see if you wanted to do this in two colors. So now on the instruction sheet, we are actually on starting on two, three, and four. Now it says to make the lines. I've already done those lines. I did that in the first step. And then it says place the pinhole of the template. Well, if you remember, I pointed out that we have a hole here that could be used for your thumbtack. And in the way we're going to measure this up, we are going to be taking that and putting it right dead center. So even though we're not putting a tack over that, I'm putting that right in the center. Now I'm using this time around my pink line, so I'm going to rotate that a bit so you can see it. I'll pull it out here so right there I've got that lined up and I'm lining up this pink line. So this is lined up right here. So for those of you that actually want to see that, I guess I've got my orange marker, it'll become pink and orange. So I'm going to just line that up right there. And then I'm going to take, because of the way I've got this lined up, right where this is, I'm going to put a mark. And that's what on your handout, there's a red line. So this is approximately, you need to remember that, approximately where I am going to be lining this up each time. That would be if we live in a perfect world. Sometimes we do, most of the time we have to adjust a bit. So I'm going to come right to that spot where this intersects, and I think you can see right down in there, that needle's going right down in our previous line of stitching. And yes, this is a little bit cumbersome, but the little bit of effort is worth the work. So I'm going to be pulling this stitch up so that I've got control of it. Could I take the time to tie it? I absolutely could, but I'm not going to. I set that back down and I'm going to be stitching from here to there and stopping. So if you are on your instructions, you are now down to number six. So I'm coming across. and right back to that line. So at that point, I'm going to lift this up. I'm pulling this back, getting my stitching. I could even pull this thread up if I wanted to at this point. I'm just going to cut it on the back. I'm 
I'll know that it's cut when I go to do the next one. So you can see that I'm going to have threads here to bury. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to show you the finished. So again, I'm putting this right on that center line and I've put some marks on there. Remember there and there. And so now that that's lined up, I'm coming over, taking a stitch down and up. Lift up my foot to pull up that thread. The reason you lift up your foot is to release the tension. So now that I've got both of those threads out of the way, I put this back down and I'm gonna stitch up and back. Stopping there. Cutting that thread, leaving it long enough on the back. So I will have one of those on every single pink line. Now my finished one, well that's not the finished one, but that's one I'm working on. This is one where I left it so the inside was red and I did this one so it's green. So you can see again that I can do two colors there. And then this is the one that I showed you the first week, so you can see what it looks like finished. So at each of these points, I'm pulling my thread to the back, tying it, and burying it with that curved needle. So I think you've got how that all works. I'm going to get my small template this time, and we're going to do the cornerstones. So for this, I'm going to do, again, right down in that center. It's even more important to get dead center. And we are on step number seven. And so I have pulled that thread up. This is a real short one. I'm going to show you one more time how I secure that because doing these, it's much easier to do this at the beginning. Sometimes my curved needle takes, gets legs and takes a walk, but I've got it back. I make a loop. You'll get to the point where you could just about do this in your sleep. I put it right back in through that loop and the point goes down in the center. So I've got my knot under control I trim those threads. I got to show you a cute little trick here. This is kind of crazy, but this is a perfect little waste can for your sewing machine. It's a tissue box. I've taken all the plastic and all the cardboard out of it, and that's what I use for my little trash can back there. It really works well. I'm going to put the needle in my mouth to get saliva in it. And as you can see, that pulls right through. Just like I said, it's almost like a magnet. And I put that right back down in and go between the layers of the fabric and the batting so it doesn't come out on the back and pull up. And remember, because I'm using white thread or white fabric, I need to make sure I get it under the batting. Then I release that needle, pull that knot through, Go ahead and set my foot back down. And before I cut this, I want to make sure that that knot doesn't come back up. So I go ahead and put that foot or put the needle back down in there so that if I need to pull on that, if it pulled it back up a bit, I can. So that is secure and ready to go. Again, I'm going to open up my template. Take out that gate, go around so that I'm on the inside, and an easy way to remember which end you're starting on on this is we are nearest where the gate is. So I'm lining up this line, and back here in the back I'm lining up that line. So I'm going to go around.
I'm going to turn this and go to the next one. Many times when we're doing this, we say that it's best to do opposites, but on this one, because we do measure that quarter of an inch, it's better to not do opposites. So as you're working with your templates, you'll learn which one you should do opposites. So now, right, I'm going to turn it, but right there, there is a quarter of an inch that I'm matching up. It's so small, but yet it is there. Always making sure I'm right back to the center. And remember, if things don't look exactly like you want them, in this case, we're going to be putting some extras like the Swarovski crystals in there. I think the little one is maybe even a bit more challenging because it's such a small area. I'm going to do one more corner, but you can see what this looks like here. So I'll pull one more around down here. So I almost forgot. In this small one, it's always best to go ahead and just secure that thread to begin with. So I'm pulling that, cutting the threads. And before I go on to the uh, border after I do this one. I'm going to show you my little hint as promised of how I organize my templates. I am absolutely loving this way of the organization of them and I certainly want to share it with you. So we're right back here in the center. As I said, I pull that down, give that a little tug. Make sure you don't slice your fabric. Those small scissors can be pretty sharp. Open this up. You'll notice on the small one I didn't go a second time around. I really thought that that would be a little bit too busy. Just a smidge because I want to get right back to that center. to look at your supply list for next week. There may be some things there that you don't have that you need to get. Of course, with this being archived, you can join us and then do your stitching later. So I'm right back to that middle. I'm going to go ahead and pull my thread and reach underneath there and clip. 
and you can see what my center looks like here. So that is the stitching for the cornerstones and that center. So one of the things that I used in one of the teaser, um, I believe it might have been on Instagram, was the fact that I was going to tell you a little bit of a secret of mine, and that is, it's not so big of a secret, but it's uh, something that I'm really enjoying doing, and that is the way I store my templates, and it's an organizational method. Now when I'm traveling, I have them in the uh, Yazzie bags, I take the ones that I'm, I'm going to be demonstrating with. But this is an easy way to organize them at home. And now's a great time to do this because it's back to school and you can get the main um, feature of this, I guess I should say, the main way to organize it. And that is one of the um, milk crates is what we would have called them. They come in all different colors and whether you knew that or not, these milk crates are actually designed with an edge here that holds hanging files. So I took all of my templates, I typed out the names, and then I put them in alphabetical order, and all of my templates are in their own little files. So this one here is my curly Q set. You can see those are down there. This is arcs and waves. I've got my feather templates back here. I've got my mini fills. Whoops, my mini fills I guess are in my traveling bag. My miniature Baptist fan is here. My simple circles templates are here and it just makes it very easy. Now, these will stack because guess what? Yes, I needed two boxes of them. And so I've got plenty of space here to grow. These I don't have filled, but then I can always just reorder them so that they're in alphabetical order. So this is an easy way for you to store and organize your templates. Um, you can see that it's right here handy and I can just pull it back and pull them out. So just a little hint there of organization makes it easier for you to work. So now what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using the 9.5 template. And on the 9.5 template, if you have your directions in front of you, you will notice in number eight, the instruction on number eight is if you look at the template, and I'm gonna turn over a piece of paper so that maybe we can see this easily. There is a line right here that indicates where your needle will be. So when I have my foot sitting in there, that line is my indication of where my needle would be. It's also how I line up. And if you will measure up, I want to make sure I tell you the right measurement. If you will measure up an inch and three fourths, you can put a temporary line there with a marker, or you can do like I did. After I had tested it, I measured up the inch and three fourths, and I used my straight edge template and my little box cutter or X Acto knife, and I just etched that on both sides. So from this line to that line is an inch and three fourths. And again, it can be temporary or you can actually mark it on there. But that's how we're going to know where to put our template in this next part of our design because we are going to be working on our border. So I'm gonna reference my instructions because I wanna go right through just like they are so that we can make certain that um, we get to the same end on this. So I've measured four inches down. You saw me do that at the beginning. You will notice in number 10, it says from the right side over here, we are gonna measure two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to get my small little ruler that I use and I am going to measure over two and a quarter inches. So I need to get, here we go, something to mark with. And of course, I like to use something that's going to come off. So this is a two and a half inch wide ruler. So I'm going two and a quarter. And I'm going to make a mark. And this is number 10 on your instructions. 
So at that point, that's my center where I'm going to line up on center. And that line that we etched is the line going across that was marked four inches. So you can see right here for the border, I've lined up that line on that four inch, it's four inches from this seam, and I have marked over two and a quarter inches. Now I've done the math for you, because after we do one, we're gonna move again, after we do another one, we're gonna move again, and if I've done the correct math, and if you follow the correct way of doing this, when we get to the center, this line should be lined up right there with the center. I'm going to put five of these passes across there. So that's how I have worked this out. And for those of you that are curious, I'm gonna show you my little way of doing this. So when I started working with this, I was using my templates and my stitching line discs. Now, if you're not familiar with stitching line discs, they are a quarter, well, they're actually a half inch diameter. Let me just get one of those for it so I can show you. So this is a stitching line disc. They come in a set of eight because they have different pull sizes in the, in the center of them. So when I was working on paper with this, I would line this up so that I had my line right here that I've talked about etching. This would sit right here and it imitates my foot. And I would have used some sort of a pen or a marker. I like to use an ink pen. And I would then have drawn this just like that. So that's how I am able to sketch these out. You can see up here I've used different colors which will show up in your instructions because I've taken the pictures from this. So that's how I design by using those stitching line discs. Stitching line discs are your best friends. It allows you to play and create and that's how I came up with this border design. So now back to what we were doing. This is my starting point. I'm lining up. I'm putting that etch line right on that four inch line. This line up here. I've changed my color of thread because I wanted to be able to see it on here. And it's kind of a pearly gray thread. So since my fabric has a little bit of a glitter in it or a metallic I wanted to be able to see this thread so I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread here and just pull that out of my way when we finish we will have done one pass and we will be right back to where we started so again that line is an inch and three-fourths up and now it's lined up on that bottom four inches away. I'm going to follow this design. This almost looks like a Hershey kiss. And I'm coming right back to the line and stopping on the line. With my needle down and everything still in the same space, I'm going to line that up again. And this time when I do this again, you'll see that it makes that nice little curly cue down there at the bottom. Got a few more stitches to go. Because we want to get right back to that line. I'm going to pull my thread out of the way over here, move to the side again. Now, as you can see, I didn't exactly line up there. So what I'm going to do as far as up here at the top, I'm going to come part of the way. And I'm going to kind of scrunch it back over 
Just a little, actually, I don't even think I'm going to do that. It's so close, it doesn't matter. Now I've got one, two, three, four, and now I'm going to have my fifth one. When I get to this point, I'm going to look at my instructions so that I can get a diagram to show you what we're going to be doing next. You can see I showed you how I drew this out. This is how we have stitched it. And here's our stopping point. So that's where I am right now. I am on that number 12 stopping point. I have moved the, now I'm moving the template over to that position. And all I'm going to do is stitch right back until it touches the line. Can you get in real close on that right there? So I'm stitching back until it touches that line. And now what I will be doing is going to page number four. Here's where we are. I just did this little stitch right here. And before you get confused, we are on 15. So with your needle down in the fabric, you're going to rotate your fabric 180 degrees and your template. So I'm just going to take this whole thing, rotate it around, And at this point, I rotate the template also. So I've even got to look at my picture here to see that I've got it set up correctly. So I'm going to be right here. This line is now lined up with that four inch line. So even though I rotated the fabric, my template needed to be rotated again after I did that. So this is going to stitch back down and we're going to stop right at the bottom. We're going to move over. This is actually easier because we can see, see this a lot better. I'm stopping here and I'm going to shift over just a bit. Move over. Right here is where, <coughs> excuse me, right here is where I want you to look for the lineup, and that's what I'm showing in number 18. You want to line up so that you're right there in the center. So I come back there, and I come back down, and stop at the line. Slide across, check up here to see that we're lined up. You can see that in that, so it's lined up. This will be our last complete one. Again, we're lined up up there. started to come down the wrong side. I'm lined up again. Remember I said it's going to come back up to where we were. So we are now in the photo on page five. We are going, we've stitched from right to left, and we're going to stop when we get, I guess, right to the point where I am right now. So I'm glad I looked at my instructions. I have moved it, and I'm going to stitch until I get right back up to the top here. And if I take my template, 
And I'm going to look at this photo right here, and you're going to notice this on number 21, the last page, page 6, we are right there. Now in this picture it shows just the space or the stitching line disc, but you can see that my template looks just like that. The line here is on here. So I've already stitched to there. So what I'm going to do, it says move template as shown. You'll notice the template is going to be turned around this way. And now I'm lining that line up that we etched and I'm putting it right back so that if the template is going to touch right on this side. Now I'm getting my threads out of the way so it's not confusing. This is where we want to end up. So I'm putting this back on that line. so that this etching that I made is on the line there and there and up against the foot. So I'm standing up here probably just a little bit in the way just to make sure I've got it right where I want it. And now I'm going to use my spacing gauge to see that I'm going to get right back to that spot. And it looks like I've got an exact quarter of an inch there. So I'm going to get this, and this will be the last stitching. And I'm coming right back to that spot. So at this point, I have a couple of threads to tie off. I'm not going to worry about that now. I'm going to leave these long. You can see I got right back to that stitching. And I'm going to do this on one more border. Now it'll be a little bit more streamlined, but I know that for some of you seeing it a second time would help. And rather than you having to backtrack, we're just going to show this again. So the first thing that I did was change my thread color so that I could see it. And if you remember, I've measured across here at that four inch line. So I'm going to take the time to draw that one more time. Using my westerly ruler, and I use the six inch that I've already marked off. So I'm going to lay that right along that line. And again, this is the ultimate marking pencil that looks more like a crayon, but it does iron out. And besides that, it really won't matter. But now you can see that real easily. Actually, I need that one more time there. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to turn it around this way so I can measure two and a quarter. If you're following along in the directions, we are on page two, step number 10. So there's two and a quarter. And that's going to be the center of where I start. Now remember, I've etched some lines on here. I can put a mark there. Maybe you could see that better. I can see my etchings just fine. And what I'm going to be doing is centering my template, lining this up, and coming right in here on that four inch line. and pulling up that thread. So I'm going to stitch up to the top and back down to the line and stop and simply slide my template over. I'm moving right to left. Repeat that.
stop with a needle right in that line. And this is the one that should be pretty much centered up and it looks like it is. Stopping right in the line again. The next one will be our last one. And we are going to be following the directions at number 12 on page 3 and stopping right at this point. And this is the one where we take it and we completely turn everything around and then our template turned with us, but we're going to turn it back around. So we are lined up just like the picture. Oh, I went one step too far. Actually, I didn't go far enough. We're going to do one little step right here. When this is lined up, we're going to stitch right back to form that, and then we rotate it. It's a good thing I've got directions here that I can follow. So now we are at step number uh, 16. This was my left cornerstone. And so right here is where we are in our directions. So the point is right there. I'm going to line up on this line. Yep, we're lined up right there, and I only come down this side and stop in that line. Move over, check to see that we're in line up here. I do want to get my threads out of the way. Slide over, line up up here. Just that slight little turn makes all the difference. It'll take us right back to that center. Again, we're lining up up there. We are now approaching this se section right here. So I'm going to come up to right there. At this point, we are on page number six, and we have just stitched this pink line. So I am going to turn that template around, line the etch line up with the four inch there, and go right back to that spot where we started. So I've finished that a second time. Once you've done this a couple of times, I'm sure you won't need your directions, but I want to show you what this looks like. And that will conclude our stitching for this session. So this is what you're looking at. You're going to have these that go travel back and forth across there. So thank you for joining us today, and hopefully next week the live will all come off just as planned. Bye for now.